last time uh, we discussed grounded conducting sphere and the potential on the surface of the sphere was zero then we considered insulated conducting charged sphere the potential on the surface wasn't zero it was non zero and we solved the potential we derived the force of interaction between the source charge and the mh charge <coughs> and then we considered a fixed potential on the surface of that sphere and we came to know that the force is actually now coulombic force for short distances it is the coulombic force for long distances it was also the coulombic force but for short distances it was always attractive right while for long distances it was repulsive now we will discuss conducting sphere in a uniform external electric field so conducting sphere in a uniform electric field now how we will generate uniform electric field you know how to generate uniform electric field if you place one charge here and one charge here then exactly on this line or at the center of it if one charge is positive the other charge is negative then exactly at the center we are having a uniform electric field but as we move above this point like for example charges are on this line one at this end and one at this end okay so if we have one positive charge here and a negative charge here then at the center we will have the maximum electric field which is the constant electric field it will be at the center but if i move just above this point then the field will be no more uniform right it is exactly on the line which is joining the two charges if i go up the field will be no more uniform why because i know the lines are actually converging so they will be at every point above this point they will be curling like this turning and that's why the field will not be uniform how to make this field uniform you know about the sheets of charges infinite sheet of charges if the sheets will be infinite then the field on this whole boundary will be uniform like the field between two <coughs> sheets of charges if the sheets will be infinite then the edges effect will be no more in this range and we will have a constant electric field but in case of two charges how we can make this field uniform we can say that if the magnitude of this charge will be growing like it will be a huge magnitude it goes to infinity then at the center will be uniform but as you go up up to some extent it may be uniform but after that one some edges effect will come in action because the edges will be near to it so what we do we say that this distance is also going to infinity the charge magnitude is going to infinity and this distance is going to infinity so all the curved lines which will be like this will become flat right if for example both charges are like this now as you are moving the charges to infinity then the field will be decreasing at this point but if you say that the charge is also growing as you move that one then the field will remain the same at the central point and the curved lines will be coming straight 
so uniform field means that all over there will be straight line the curvature will decrease so we will now cover this geometry that if I consider uh, one charge which is a positive charge here at this point this is plus Q and this is the central point and this is another charge exactly at the same distance and this is minus Q. Let's say this is the distance Z equals R and this is the distance Z equal minus R. So this is actually your reference point or you call the origin. And now at this point, what is the electric field at this point? It will be equal to means it will be Q by this, the electric field will be Q K times Q by R square minus plus K Q by R square. Because the distance from here to there is R and from here to here is R. So in the origin, the net field will be K 2Q over R square. Now I want this electric field to go to some constant value which I call E0. And this will be the constant value. So I will have to apply on this E that limit the Q value is going to infinity and the R value is going to infinity. And then E I will write that this is KQ2 and R square is going to E0. If I will impose these two conditions, that limit Q goes to infinity, R goes to infinity, then this field will be actually a constant and uniform field. The lines will be almost flat. And then at the reference point, I place a conducting sphere. When the field is uniform, and then you place a conducting sphere such that the electric field is always in this direction. From positive to negative is the electric field direction. So I will have, I now know the fact that when this field, when this uh, field, let me write here, this one, when minus Q is there, when charge is there, it will induce some charge here. And the plus Q will also induce some charge here. Let's say I call this charge is Q1 and this charge is Q2. So the capital Qs are actually the source charges and small Q1, Q2 are the induced charges. Now from the previous the knowledge are the topics that we have covered. I can write that Q1 is equal to minus Q A over R. Now A being the radius of this sphere. Q A over R at Z equals minus R and Q2. So how I can write, because I know that this is equal to minus R, so let me put the value of this and this will be minus A square over R. And Q2 is equal to plus Q A over R at Z equals plus A square over R. You remember this? What was actually the earlier induced charge? You remember it was for positive charge, it was minus Q A over Y. Now Y was what? Y was the distance 
from the reference point of the of the source charge. So this is A over Y and now this distance is equal to R. A is equal to, this was A square over Y. So for Y you are just putting R. Similarly here Q2 will be, Q2 is the source charge, the induced charge which is due to minus Q. So its induced charge will be plus Q and A over R. So these are actually the charges that are induced and now what will be the potential? The potential will be actually the sum of all the charges and let's say that we say the net potential outside the sphere is the sum of terms for each charge. The net potential The net potential is actually will be due to Q, due to minus Q and due to Q1 and due to Q2. So I can write that find at A point R is equal to K times and plus Q over R minus the distance of this Q R minus R Q plus this will be Q1 divided by R minus the distance of Q1 plus Q2 and R minus R the distance of Q2 and plus minus Q divided by R minus the distance of Q2 and this is actually Q here and it is enclosed right so the potential due to these four charges will be this one and now it's better to put the values and the values if I put let me move this k here. So it will be 1 over k phi of r. And this is equal to <coughs> this magnitude is q. What about r minus rq? r minus rq will be, you can write this one. What is rq? This is the rq for plus charge, this is equal to minus r right so i can write that this is actually r plus capital r okay so i can write that this is r plus capital r absolute and then plus q1 and what about this one q1 will be let me uh, write for this one, for Q1, or why not to move this one earlier and then it will be plus, move this one earlier, minus Q and then R minus R here. So I can move the two plus Qs here and then plus for Q1 I can write Q1 is minus QA over R minus QA over R divided by now R minus RQ so I will have to write one will be R minus Z the other will be R plus Z so I will put the values and the values are like the first one I can write is for minus Q A R. So this one will be capital Q. This one will be capital Q. And R plus R plus. And because this one is minus this, so A square over R. 
and plus q a over r and this will be r minus a square over r right i am just putting what i did r minus r q this charge was the value was minus r so minus minus plus r here it was r so i have put r now when i come here then this is r minus z and z was because for r i have written minus q a over r so for minus q a over r this value is minus a square over r so minus minus will become plus and a square over r for this one i am having q a over r so q2 is actually a q a over r and then it is 8 plus a square over r so r minus a square over r it is clear now i can expand this relation and i can write that 1 over k phi of r is equal to how i can expand this one this will be because r is any point here and from the previous geometry you know when we consider the observation point x so the angle was involved there i can write that this will be r square plus r square plus 2r r and cos of the angle and it will have 1 over 2 power <coughs> you remember this yes. plus this one will be minus q divided by the only difference between this and this here will be minus so r square plus r square minus 2r r cos of the angle and 1 over 2 similarly 